my agenda for this would be to take you through some product news, talk about new integrations, that is devices we support, and then finally to the showroom super tool. So first, I want to travel back in time a little bit. This is actually me as a kid, and I show you this picture because I want you to understand and get a, an idea about where is my passion coming from. Apparently, as a kid, I was consumed with the idea of creating controlled surfaces. So even back then, when I was like 10 years old, I would dry, uh, draw uh, TV screens on cardboard boxes and, and wire it all together with uh, the kind of strings you use to, to uh, dry your clothes and, and so on. So um, I, I spent time doing that as a kid and having my fun and my father to snap this picture. So as you can see, there's some deeply rooted passion in uh, me that has led to the creation of this company. And this is essentially my dream. I'm sitting here and I want, with my great team around me, we want to invent the future of media production control. So um, that's a big task, but it's exciting. And I think we are already very well on the way towards that goal. But that's really what is burning inside of all of us, that passion to, to do this. If we look at some of the classic um, unique selling points of what we do, the, our take on inventing that future, there are some themes that you will find again and again, and we talk about them in many videos. Seamless integration is one of them. The fact that you can control many devices from a single panel. We want to make sure that your operators are not uh, bothered with having uh, one panel over here for a camera and another one here for the switching if it makes sense to bring it together. So the integration of control is one of the cornerstone ideas in our controllers and what we can do now that we make universal broadcast controllers. We also want to honor the devices. We know that we are not the only one in town who want to make quality and unique uh, devices, so camera manufacturers and switching manufacturers and, you know, all the brands that you miss to see at NAB in a few weeks, they are all in this game to give you something extraordinary. And when we integrate with them, we don't go with the lowest common denominator. We want really to integrate the features that they made for you. So they are available on your Skyway panel. This is why we spent so much time on individual devices, working with our partners to integrate control of that in our panels. It also has to be easy, but at the same time, we don't want to miss out on the features and, and making it deeply configurable. So I would like to say that the entry, it has to be like low, low barrier, low floor, but a high ceiling. There has to be room to grow. And that's also a very important ambition, but it's so difficult. And I think we're still struggling. We'll still make mistakes in making it easy enough. I mean, for an engineer like me, it's not difficult to make it complex or have crazy ambitions about how flexible things should be, but it's really to put the ease into this. So I, I hope we'll manage with what we have in store for you. And then it has to be also flexible. We have done that over time. If you look at our products, you see that they have almost no hard-coded functionality. They are full of small, nice OLED displays that will give you labels either by graphics or by text that explains what buttons do and what encoder values you are adjusting and all this stuff. And that's very unique for Skyhoy products. Obviously, we want to provide high quality and we are also developing a lot of custom components. Today, I'll introduce a new RCP joystick we have developed ourselves. We have a T-bar in the making. We have uh, the four-way buttons. If you look back in time, this is something we brought to this uh, market, uh, the way that every single button could, in fact, be a little binary joystick, if you want it to be. So those innovative ideas for um, tactile components is also found in, in what we do. And if you have missed out on it, Tactile control is like the overarching theme, right? We, um, we believe that for visual content production, you need to keep your eyes on the road. So you need to have your uh, hands on something you can touch and um, navigate without looking. So this is why tactile control is so important. I'm sure you agree with that. Um, the devices has to be also simple in cabling. So we have power over Ethernet and it's all IP and single cable and all this stuff. This is great. This is the future. And finally, I wonder if we have a single product or many products. If you look at our number of um, devices you can buy, 
you would say we have many products, but they're all on the same platform, right? They all run Unisketch, which is the software that makes every single controller able to talk to every camera any other controller would talk to. So it's really a matter of asking, what devices do you support? And what form factors do you have to offer me? And then combine these two because they can be configured with Unisketch. So that's some of the things that go into what we do every day. We are every day going to work to ease the use of technology for people in media production. And I think we have done a good job so far. But during this whole time where we have had plenty of opportunity to reflect, the question is, can we improve? And we want to make the seamless integration even better. Honestly, there are limits to what Unisketch can give us, how easy it can be. And sometimes we just bang our head into a place where it's difficult to make it much more easy as it is. So we have found answers to some of those um, issues. We also want to significantly ease the setup process. So when you want to discover panels on the network or devices like your camera and video switcher and so on, if you want to make uh, sub configurations where you have configurations that can be merged together and mixed. This is not possible in Unisketch. So we have found ways to do that on a new platform. We also want to increase the overall system resources so that we can talk to more cameras and more switches and uh, also go to the other side of, of the earth more easily since also remote production and security uh, themes that clearly has showed um, relevance here in the Corona times. You probably know the mega panel and that's also one of our products, which is in fact like uh, eight to 10 products that people would buy in a frame and they together, they are one lovely huge panel for video switching on uh, large projects. This mega panel will also um, need some care in terms of a management system. And that's also a part of what we'll show you today. And finally, we are also going to prove how the investment in Skyhoy hardware is uh, really an investment because the controllers you bought yesterday and the ones you buy tomorrow, they will all come together as Lego bricks that can build new control surfaces. So how are we doing this? What is it all about? And in fact, it's a rebirth of an idea. So like five years back, this is me at our office at a different place in Copenhagen we invented the magnetically snapping together controllers and it looked like this in a uh, funky moment at the office where we imagined we would be actual rock stars. And um, yeah, so, <laughs> so funny stuff like this comes around. Now, that was actually a really, really nice idea and it always was so much fun to just snap these together because um, yeah, it, it was a strong tactile experience, honestly. I think the execution on it was either ahead of its time or it was not done in the right way because we have reinvented how this was uh, done and thought today. So we have for you today, the blue pill. The blue pill is modularity reimagined. And uh, with the blue pill, what we are basically able to do is to take any Skyhoy controller and bring together. So look at this, for instance, we could have a Crosspoint 24 and a Lifefly put together and merged to be a, a single surface by the blue pill. So they are both independent network devices talking to the blue pill, but the blue pill will put them together to be one panel. The same blue pill could be used to bring an Airfly Pro and an XC7 together. The XC7 in itself is a, um, qu quite honestly, it's not a super exciting product because it's just a joystick. There's not a single button except the one on the top. So what will you be using it for? But when you combine it with the Airfly Pro, suddenly it makes sense because this joystick will now give your producer in a one-man band scenario, the ability to easily control PC cameras that could be selected by the preview row on the Airfly Pro. But it could also be that you want to, for instance, take that XC7 and combine it with an inline 22, which is a, a product which has four encoders and a lot of buttons. So they are essentially like half of a PTC controller, but without the joystick. And in some cases, this module would be used for, um, it could be used for shading, but bring those two together and you have a PTC controller. This is essentially what an, a, a PTC Pro is. And you could take the Airfly Pro and combine with the Crosspoint 48 to have even more direct access to your sources using the blue pill once again to merge it together into a single control surface.
So that's what modularity reimagine um, really means. And of course, the master application of them all is the mega panel. The mega panel has been around for a long time and it runs on Unisketch and it still does. And it will talk directly to your devices. Maybe we'll have something like a proxy. We have the ATEM proxy or the vMix bridge, which will be um, uh, ensuring that each module in the mega panel can safely talk to an ATEM switcher or a vMix system. Now, the mega panel could also be managed by the blue pill. So it becomes one big control surface and configured a single place instead of in each individual module. So that's some of the exciting possibilities that Blue Pill is bringing to, um, to the Unisketch uh, world. Yes, so how it works. It works like this, that all the Unisketch panels are using raw panel device core to talk to the Blue Pill. And raw panel is a, a device core we have developed and we've had it for a long time. So you can see how we have had a lot of foresight here because we have always imagined that one way that Unisketch panels should be able to go beyond the direct device control that is the main thing we do is to offer themselves as a generic keyboard, if you will. So raw panel basically means, just shortly, anytime you press a key, um, a button on your Skyhoy panel, the button will send a trigger command to the receiving end over network, like button number two has been pressed. Or if you move a fader on the Skyhoy controller, or if you turn a knob, then it will send the uh, absolute position of the fader, or it will send you a positive or negative pulse value to indicate which way you turn the encoder. And then you can do something with that information in the other end, just like a keyboard. And you can also send back colors and display information. So raw panel is how a lot of our partners are using Skyhoy panels for custom integrations. But now it's also being used by our own technology, the blue pill, to create these um, modular solutions that I have presented to you here. Yes, actually, I think you want to also see the thing. And now I've just been showing you pictures and so on. So let's just take a little break here and then look at the blue pill. What is it actually like? It's this um, anodized aluminum uh, enclosure here. It has a color display here in the middle. It has a lot of mounting options like quarter inch 20 threads on top and bottom. It has a little slot here for you to, uh, to strap it to something if you want. On the side, obviously, it has Ethernet connector. This is a one gigabit Ethernet connection. We have a micro USB for um, any service activity you might need. On the back side, we actually put an LED. This could be, if you're fancy, used as a tally lamp or whatever. Oh, you could just have it light up red like a, um, a pimped car or something. This is completely up to you what you want to use this LED for. On this side, we have some expansion slots. We have a, an HDMI output, and then we have a USB-A output here. And these, I'll, I'll come back to what we can use these for, but this little slot is, uh, it's not for inserting coins. Um, you actually only need PoE to keep it going. And uh, a little, um, yep. So uh, this slot is for expansion modules. And uh, we'll look at them a little later, but um, this is it. This is the blue pill. So in itself, it's not a, a panel with uh, buttons and so on. Obviously, it's like a little management device that brings this together and ha have software running on it. So that's what you see on, on this slide. It's based on custom Linux. It is therefore powerful, it's scalable, and it's going to be a future-proof way for us to develop applications that will enhance our ecosystem. And we call the main application Blue Pill Reactor. So this is what that little icon you have seen a number of times now indicates. The concept of device cores are known both on Unisketch panels, but also on Reactor. But it's not the same. The device cores we have made for Unisketch are separate from the ones that we make on uh, reactor. So, and they also slightly different in the in the approach they have um, technically. So, um, but in other words, when um, we put out Blue Pill here, we have a large, large, large overlap of device cores between the two. But you'll also find that on Blue Pill, you generally have many more options and many more features available than you have on uh, Unisketch. So you can. Uh, this is 
in part because the platform is, is more powerful, it's more easy to do things here. And the device calls we make are actually binaries that are run on the Linux system inside. It means that we also have uh, stability, flexibility, and limitlessness in mind for the what we can do with device calls. We don't have the same restrictions on how many ports and how many clients we can open and how many cameras we can control. Okay, any computing system has limits, but you know the limits are really not in bound to the hardware. They are bound to uh, the well, they are, but they are not bound to the software written. So a lot of the, the obstacles that we have sometimes identified on Unisketch is not available on Blue Pill in the same way. And that's exciting. And finally, for those of you who enjoy to think about how can I extend the Skyhoy ecosystem with my own code, it's also possible to code your own device course. Maybe not from day one, because we won't have time to support everybody with information on this, but you can do it in multiple ways. And it means that you have more ways than um, raw panel to work in custom ways with Skyhoy panels. You can actually make your own device course that will be accepted and uh, communicated with using the blue pill. So that's also really exciting if you think about the possibilities we have with this platform. And some of the integration news I have for you today is device course we have made for the blue pill exclusively for this platform. And we are super excited to work with Red to support the Red Komodo line of cameras. They have created a uh, new protocol for control of Red Komodo. In fact, I also got confirmed from Red that the V Raptor is having the same protocol inside. So as soon as we have had a chance to adapt the integration with that one, it will always also be supported. So <clears throat> that's, that's great. Um, we also have the Lumix BGH1 camera supported by this one. And I think this is also a very unique integration. At least we need to do some serious reverse engineering to make that work, but we did. And this camera will excite some of you for live production use as well. So just to mention, this is also supported with the blue pill and um, reactor application. Canon CIN series is a new line of PC cameras from Canon. And uh, we really think that these cameras are super cool, great. We have been working with them for more than half a year at this point. And um, th there are two models. You'll see them later in our showroom. And these are also supported natively by the uh, Blue Pill. So those were some integration news for you. If we look at seamless integration, to give you an idea what it means, the ambition is that you should have a controller where you could have like five different cameras controlled with the same attention to the individual details of the cameras, depending on which one you select. So take, uh, as an example, a Marshall POV camera. You want that to be one camera on your PDC controller, regardless of whether it has a pan tilt head or if it's just in a fixed position. You still want to be able to, for instance, uh, shade it. And uh, then you would have a PTC camera like a Sony BSCX uh, 1000 or H800. You could have a camcorder, you could have a combined PTC camera, which would in fact be a POV camera on a lens on a PT head. So that's three individual devices, but you want them to appear to you as a single device. And we also have a very popular example, combine a dream chip camera with a BR remote micro L head. That combination is also uh, one of those examples we could give of what you could bring together in a Skyhoy controller using Reactor. Now, this is not because it couldn't be done on Unisketch. It was just very easily complex, <laughs> to say the least. I mean, if you, you could maybe combine two of them, but it, you, it's still a lot of manual work. And if you want three, four, and five, then uh, it was really difficult. But the ways we constructed Reactor makes it so much easier in part because you can you can actually inherit sub configurations so it's the, the way we have built the system means that it's much easier to um to pick individual bits of configuration inside your the, the larger configuration of your device. This is details that I would love to show you during the, the training sessions you seem to, to want us to, uh, to give to you this fall. So that, that I'll, I'll leave the details for that. But the main message is mix and match is easy. And um, yeah, that's, that's what we want to say about this. Now, 
there is also an application of the blue pill beyond reactor and the device cores I have introduced so far. And that one would be extension cables. So the little slot on the side of the blue pill here, this little slot is um, allows you to insert an ex sorry, extension cable. And uh, if you look at my slide here, you can see that this extension cable has a plug that has three wires coming out of it. In the example I'm giving you here, you could imagine having a DreamChip Atom 1 camera uh, connected to one of these cables. So that would be the native connector with power and signaling to that camera. Let's say that this was mounted with an ADL lens, a power zoom lens. That lens would need to have control for its zoom motor, its iris and its focus. And finally, it could be the third wire would connect with a uh, Visca over RS422 uh, to, to a pan tilt head from Brushworks. So the blue pill would host three applications that would talk to each of these devices. And then it would provide a network API that would make it possible to communicate with these three as if it was a single camera. That's the essential way you should think about it. But we will have an almost unlimited amount of ways to combine these extension cables. We'll go by popular demand, so please write to us what kind of ideas you get, because this is how we often um, deal with response from our community by, um, yeah, we will be able to, to uh, construct these cables and the combinations from your feedback. And here is another one. It could be an IO Industries camera combined with the Fujinon lens and sitting on an Emotimo slider and pen tilt system. And each of these would also require some uh, control. Here's another one, BR remote micro head combined with a Kaya camera. And um, the, the third one is kind of unrelated, but it's just to show you that we also have some support for Canon's um, OKR protocol, the one called remote uh, B. And finally, I will, uh, I will also uh, say, which is not visible on this one, it also does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It means we can control cameras that would have a web UI accessible uh, through an access point that it would set up and you could connect to. And uh, the web, uh, sorry, the uh, Wi-Fi feature inside the blue pill will be either access point or uh, client, or actually I think both at the same time is possible. But the, the main point is that potentially you could also use the blue pill to connect to and provide wired access to a uh, wireless device, like a Sony camera that would have a web UI that was never meant to be shaded really, but which of course you can, you can connect to it and you could still integrate with the um, um, WebSocket UI. It has a, a WebSocket um, interface and so on. So this is just examples that I wanted to highlight also as how the blue pill has extendability beyond the uh, main applications we have been discussing. So to summarize all this, blue pill is modularity for Unisketch panels. It's also ease of use and ease of reuse of configurations. It is new device cores. We have much more power than we ever had. And we are also providing you legacy connectivity to analog and digital and serial types of devices uh, like the ones that I just went through. And the much more is, of course, things that is yet to come, but potentially prepared for on this platform. Yes. At this point, I would like to give you a small demo so that you have an idea about what Reactor would look like, how we have addressed some of the concerns that I identified at first. And uh, I'll be giving you an example here where we um, look at how we can discover panels. So um, this is the UI of Reactor as it looks right now in our development version. And I will create a collection of panels. So um, we will call it webinar for now and create. And um, then we close down here. Now we can add a panel. And I want to add my Airfly Pro V2 here. Oh, you see, I have a lot of panels on my network. They are popping up with the IP addresses and serial numbers and so on. You see, yeah, this is clearly the Skahoy headquarters. But I'll just pick my Airfly Pro. And after checking the details here, I will press the save button. So I just added the Apply Pro. Now I would like to explore other panels. So um, maybe we'll just play around a little bit. So let's uh, see what could be fun looking at. Maybe this MK2. 
MKA2. So this is actually from the Mega Panel, one of the joystick modules on the Mega Panel. Uh, what about uh, the Frame Shot here? Frame Shot is a product I'll show you in a moment. Yeah, it could be that one, but then again, no, I don't want to combine that with the. What about MK48? No, that's also from the Mega Panel. Actually, I'm looking for the Crosspoint 48, so. I couldn't see it, but I can filter it out like this. So I save this. Now, this is arranged in a canvas. So this is my default canvas. And look at this, I have a graphical view. So it means that the two controllers I've now chosen, I can arrange them side by side in the exact way that I believe that I'll be using them in the real life. And after this point, I could go configure them. So panels are arranged in collections on canvases. and for devices, it's the same kind of thing. I add device and you see it initiates a search on the network for my devices, which I can then pick and add to a collection of devices. And that's basically how Reactor works. So in this way, you can see how the ease of use, the ease of configuration, taking panels, devices, and then it, with configurations, the same thing that you can you can mix this together more easily than you ever could. So we're excited about bringing this out and um, making that um, make your life easier. So as a sort of summary to what or how Reactor works, you can look at it as being divided into a um, collection of panels, collections of devices, and then the configurations are what brings panels and devices together panel sending triggers, devices returning feedback to the panels to color the buttons and fill in the displays. And such three things are arranged in a project, much like you know a project from a um, editing application where you also have media files and stuff that you, that you bring together and you can share. So actually a, a panel collection or a device collection can be shared in multiple projects. Why? Because Many of you guys will have the same set of devices available, but you will run, want to run a different project from time to time. One example could be if, if you had a church with different types of services, sometimes you would have a, one producer and a PDC operator. Uh, at other times, you would have a single guy who needs to do it all. And it would just be a matter of changing the configuration between um, one and another one, and then arranging the panels in a way to respond to that operator scenario. But it would be the same devices you control. So that's just an example. Simulation, variables, virtual triggers, preset engines, timelines. We have a lot of things that is not ready for release yet, but it will come down the line. And it's really nice to look that you know, ahead and see these things in the pipeline. This is really exciting for us in the development team. That was Blue Pill, and now to the frame shot. If you have followed us, about a year ago, we had webinars where I showed the frame shot for the first time. This product has just been here all this time, but we could not bring it to you before it was meaningful. And Blue Pill makes it meaningful. This is 12 color displays, 12 four-way buttons, and these color displays can show you thumbnails. And I'll show you that in a moment. The design in itself is this really, really, really nice unibody design. Two pieces of aluminum clicked together like this. I, I think I could use this safely as a hammer and uh, it won't break, but I wouldn't because it's just so pretty. I love this design. And the frame shot really shines when you combine it with a blue pill and a PDC controller. Because one of the main applications we have in mind for the frame shot is how this could be an amazing PDC preset recall platform. So with a PDC Pro or PDC Fly, one of our PDC controllers, you have preset recall for your cameras, of course. But with the frame shot, you can suddenly see what you would get if you recall preset number five. You don't need to label it, all you need to do is to store the preset from the frame shot and it will remember the thumbnail from the moment you start the preset. So in this way, you can build really, really, really user-friendly preset recall platforms for your volunteers or for yourself if you just want to really treat yourself. So once again, you can see how FrameShot and PDC Pro will be running Unisketch and BluePill will be running Reactor.
sometimes you don't have a camera that can deliver the thumbnail to you. Some cameras do. The Panasonic cameras can deliver thumbnails, or we have been able to extract th thumbnails from them. Uh, the Canon cameras, same thing. We found a way to extract the thumbnails from the video stream, of course. So, um, and, and the eye cameras would probably be the same thing. I think we're working on that. Anyway, different PTC cameras. Some will let you access the video stream. Others won't have it. If you don't have it, you can still grab uh, frames with the frame grabber. And now you have another application of the blue pill. The USB port can be fitted with any webcam compliant device and we should be able to grab a frame from it. So it could be, yeah, like a webcam or some other device that will do this. We have some small um, things that would allow you to insert HDMI in the one end and then it delivers webcam uh, output on the other side. So the frame link is a frame grabber application that the blue pill can run to grab such frames and combine that with a multi-viewer output, then you could basically say my camera number five is located right here on my multi-viewer, which goes into this one. And whenever you store the preset, grab that little tile of the multi-viewer. So this is how we will enable even this for cameras that doesn't support giving you thumbnails directly. Yes. So let's put these two aside and look at a good old classic. Now, the RCP is one of the uh, first products that Skahoy put out. We actually started with video switches, but then at some point we uh, designed a universal RCP. And today I will present you the RCP Pro right here. And this one has a number of improvements. And the one we are most excited about is to provide you our own engineered joystick for the RCP. So, um, Let's look at it on this slide and see what it actually has. So main feature is custom metal aluminum joystick here. I think this will rival Sony's um, joystick, which is like the reference in the business quite a bit. First of all, it's just RCP joystick like you can, um, um, that you have always experienced it. And it has push function like this for um, your, what is it called? Joystick override. There it is. And then it has encoder ring right here. Now, normally on an RCP joystick, this encoder ring is a potentiometer. So it has an end stop at some point. Actually, this one is a high resolution magnetic encoder. So it can go indefinitely. Why? Because if you have a component like this one, ideally you want it to not have fixed positions. That means if you change the camera on this one, like the, the joystick will actually have, by definition, the joystick sitting in this position won't move to this position if you change camera. But we can do it with the encoder ring. So this is why we made it an encoder. And then we even have a little haptic feedback inside that will be enabled at a later point that will tell you if you hit the end. So this is at least how we imagine this would be done. But one of the most amazing things on this one at um, that, that will be super obvious is that it has a display on top. And the display is actually compensating for what you have on these joysticks. Normally there's like a little um, um, a gauge that tells you where's your master black. So the, dis the display on the joystick is a um, black white OLED display, graphical OLED display that can show uh, anything you want, really. You can program it from Unisketch or uh, from um, Blue Pill Reactor to show um, text or graphics uh, at your well. You can even have, you know, two side by side. We will come back to that when we have configurations we can show you in a live demonstration. And uh, so, so you can see what we can basically do on this. But you need to see it as something that informs you about the state of things when you're looking at the RCP like this, just like the Sony RCP has the indicator for Master Black on top. This is the compensation um, that we have made here, making this very, very flexible. And then there's a, a, an LED. This uh, silicone here is an LED that could be tally or whatever you want to assign to that one. So that was a joystick, something we've been working on for a very, very long time and uh, finally bringing out to you today. It also has a number of other features. It has three channels of GPIO, meaning that we have three inputs and three outputs on the back side. There's a connector here on the back side. And on this connector, um, we usually on our RCPv2 has one channel of each, but now we have three channels of each. 
So that will be good news to some of you. And then we have ergonomics improved with the raised display here. You can maybe see it in the side view that we have angled it like 30 degrees and that makes for a much better viewing angle on the display. Not that these OLED displays are bad because you can view them at any angle, but still it just gives a little bit extra. So that's added. And the final point is that this device has blue pill inside. So we decided now that we have device cores for a lot of camera shading, like the Red Komodo or the Lumix camera, why not with an RCP put the blue pill inside the device so that the blue pill doesn't have to come next to it in this case. Blue pill makes a lot of sense when you want to combine a lot of these devices together. Then you have a central hub. But if you have this RCP and you wanted to just talk to your Red Komodo camera, we thought, okay, let's put the blue pill inside, see if that's possible. And we actually managed to do it on this product. So that's also great. And if you're interested in that, please contact us because there are some pros and cons here in the beginning. There are certain things you can't do on the blue pill platform yet and you need Unisketch for, but there's a lot of things you can. So we would love to talk to you about those opportunities. Yes. And <clears throat> you should reconsider the poll from earlier. So I think more than 5% of, five of you would meet me if, uh, or wouldn't you? I, I mean, I think there are safe ways to do trade shows. This is, um, this is just me having fun before NAB when I thought it might actually happen. And I was looking forward, <laughs> forward to keeping two meters distance and shouting to each other. And <laughs> I think that would essentially increase a lot of spitting in the room if, if, if we were to do that. So maybe it was a good thing they called it off. And actually, I'm sorry, North American friends, there's a long way to go to Amsterdam, but it looks like IBC is going to be a thing. And I am super excited because they just lifted restrictions in, in Holland a few weeks back. And it, it seems to mean that we can just apply a ton of hand sanitizer and we should be good at the IBC show in Amsterdam. So that's really, really exciting for us here in Europe. But for you, I really look forward to seeing you at NAB in April 22, hopefully without hazmat suits. But in the meantime, and this is the point, we have a new built showroom. Actually, we are still building it as um, in, in these days and hours, actually. And now that trade shows are so difficult to depend on, having our own showroom for remote access, remote demos, but with all the Skahoi gear and all our partner companies' devices there will make us, um, uh, give us a really good chance to make powerful demonstrations for you of the solutions that we can provide. And I want to show you. So here we come with a little showroom tour. And Olivier, are you on the line? Yeah, Casper. Very good, Olivier. So maybe you want to uh, guide me a little bit here in the yeah, showroom. Yeah, yeah. What do you want to see? Come okay, closer. stop, stop. I'll and stand here faithfully. On, on, your, on your left? This is the uh, mega yep. panel. Maybe introduce That's the, the mega, mega panel. panel because I'm not sure everybody in the US know the product very well. Right, right. The mega panel. This is the mega panel. And this is um, almost the most popular configuration. We just gave it a notch extra because we have two extra utility sections over here. These are accessory modules. But you see, uh, actually, uh, who messed this up? I mean, and hey, by the way, why don't you look at this? This is the modularity we talk about. You see, you can actually flip these around. And what I just saw is that somebody like this and it really snaps nicely in here with the magnets and so on. Can I get this? Don't destroy the show. Oh, maybe please. this was not such a clever idea on a live show. Actually, now it worked, right? <laughs> look at this. Look at this. These two modules in themselves become a PTC controller. You see PTC joystick, and we have uh, uh, color displays actually here. This is MKA2. This is MKA1. But if you, you look at this side, we have the uh, fader module here in the middle. So we have an A and a B version to have offset T-bars, which is essential if you want to have a mega panel like this. And then we have over here extendable in this direction. But here we have 24 buttons, broadcast quality style buttons from NKK Japanese manufacturing, super high quality uh, in 2ME configuration. But this is just a matter of a frame. We could extend this into 3 or even 4ME if we wanted to. We haven't done it and we haven't seen a lot of interest in going to 4ME, but theoretically possible. As you can see, it makes so much sense catering to modularity in this way because you can extend and you can compress 
as you want, even from sh show to show with the blue pill. If we look at the table, uh, just uh, the, the arrangement just uh, side, um, to the side here, we have the Airfly Pro with a Crosspoint 48. And over here, a waveboard because we are going to demonstrate this with audio control from TriCaster and VMix and probably also ATEM switches as well in this configuration. By the way, we're working with Panasonic to support Kairos, which is the new super cool platform for doing uh, live production. I don't know really exactly what they will call themselves because nowadays things just like the technology we make is so flexible that it's sometimes difficult to apply a label, but that will be also supported on the mega panel. So that's the broadcast table in the showroom. And you can you can look around and you can see it's a lot of it's really camera heavy in here. And over can here you, we have another yeah, table. Yes, Olivier. PTZ, can you show us all the PTZ camera that you are introducing here? Yes, um PTZ cameras. I counted. We have 30 different PTZ cameras. I don't know if we have that kind of um density of different PTC cameras anywhere else in the world, but we do. We have cameras from IDA, JVC, Canon, Panasonic here, Vadio, Sony, Bolin, Newtek. If we look back here, we have uh, Avonic, we have PTC Optics, BirdDog, another Canon camera. This is Canon CIN300, this is the 500, so big brother, little brother. We have a new JVC camera, which I am not sure if I can reveal actually, but over here, we have other PTC cameras. These just came in today. This is a, a Bolin we have had for a while. Marshall has asked us to integrate with CV730. Uh, yes, so that's coming up. And we have uh, October, Everett, Vadio again. Whew, a lot of cameras. If you look at the controllers from Skahoy, you can see how PTC with Fly Pro PTZ Extreme. This is our typical four camera controller lineup. But then I squeezed in an MKA2 because I wanted you guys to see that even though this module is designed to be a mega panel accessory module, you could also pick it out and say, hmm, that's actually a nice little simple PTZ controller. It has a nice Hall Effect joystick. It has a few buttons and knobs here for adjustment of settings. But most importantly, it has colorful OLED displays and I can make a simple little camera selector of uh, three, four buttons and a simple preset recall for volunteers, for instance, to make user-friendly PVC control. So this is another option, but right here, this is where the frame shot that I stole for our webinar would have been. And here we would demonstrate how the frame shot alongside the PDC Pro would make this powerful combination, this powerful couple that I showed you on the slides. But with the click of a button, I could just flip this around and have the frame shot sit on the other side of the PTC Fly, and then it could work with the PTC Fly instead of the PTC Pro. And that's some of the things that we'll be demonstrating when we get to IBC in Amsterdam. And also during this fall on some webinars or videos that we'll make later. Yes, um, let's just take a quick Jasper, look at what we have here on the back. Yeah. Yes, Olivier? You have been talking a lot about uh, modularity, but uh, what about integration? You were talking about uh, seamless integration of multiple devices put together uh, from multiple brands to, to, to provide a global solution. Uh, I know that there is something behind you who is exactly showing that. That is true. If you remember one of my uh, slides, there was an example with a pan tilt head and a lens and a camera on the back. That couple is being showed here in our showroom. We have an IO Industries Vic Victorum camera. We have this ADL uh, 35 times zoom lens sitting on a Rushworks uh, heavy duty PTX pan tilt head. So this combination will be demonstrated how it's, it's hooked up with the extension cable to a blue pill and being controlled as a single unit from a PTC controller. Uh, generally, we'll have blue pill extension cables set up here to control BR remote head, Marshall camera here. Um, we have another dream chip camera coming up over there and the Canon camera and so on. In this direction, we have another integration. We have an IDA camera sitting on a Kessler pan tilt head on a slider. 
So that will be a demonstration of how you take a block camera and make it into a pan tilt uh, camera, even with the slide functionality. Once again, as a single unit, controlled as a single unit. In this section over here, we have some more PDC cameras. We have some houses of worship focus. We want to show you how the XC7 can be brought together with the inline 22, or we can snap it over here on the airfly and so on. This whole mix and match functionality will be shown in this section again with the click of a button on the ui of the blue pill we can change between these to easily facilitate a a new configuration yeah uh in this section we have some um shading going on with colorfly and rcps and uh rec control duo and some more cameras and lenses and so on so basically the whole back wall is really heavy on the seamless integration aspect of what we're doing so anything else, Olivier, or are we done over yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A nice showroom, but how can it be useful for our customers, partners, and friends? Right. This is something that we are still exploring, but I have seen even before it is just close to being ready. I've seen my staff sitting here having meetings, uh, using their webcam to show stuff and and making use of it even in that sense. But what I expect is that we'll allow um, or we'll facilitate ways to um, book a demo or in in some way tap into getting as close as you can get a live um, feel for how it is to control and work with our devices and any of these uh, wonderful cameras from our partners. So um, I, I think we are going to explore that together and find out what works the best way. So. Um, just let the sales team know what you could imagine would be the, the way to approach this. But obviously, uh, integrating it into a Zoom call would be one way. And actually, if we have had NAB, we would have been able to, to be in Las Vegas and over the internet control cameras in Copenhagen over a VPN network. Another consequence of Blue Pill and Reactor and the network reality that is made available on this platform. Yep. Um, I think we'll go back to the studio now. So yeah, thanks for following me into the showroom here. And uh, let's move on with the webinar to wrap it up. I think we have a lot of questions. Or we could yes, have some we have questions. A question. We have a question, um, Casper. And I will start with one question that is linked to something you just mentioned about the latency when you are doing uh, the control of multiple devices with the blue pill. And even more with a remote production. Mm -hmm. So will somebody read the question or should I be able uh, to? Does having blue pill in between devices and panel add latency? Right. Um, yes, I had the same question this morning and uh, I was a little bit unsure of what it was referring to. If it was just like, if I am on the same network and I have the, yeah, the blue pill as a middleman, um, I haven't measured that latency, but I would expect it to be in sub five milliseconds. Um, but honestly, it, it's a good question and we would look at um, what exactly that is um, now that it's a concern. I mean, it's like you are adding one network link, if you will, um, in, this, in the sense that from the panel, from the Unisketch panel to the, to the blue pill, you now have a network link that you didn't have before. Actually, that is not true if you have the RCP Pro because there you have blue pill inside and there the latency is um, essentially zero. Um, but I think it's also pretty close to zero if you have a frame shot on the same network as your blue pill, you shouldn't be able to see any issues in that case. But another thing that, of course, will give you latency. If the blue pill was in Grant Tyler's office in Los Angeles, talking to a blue pill in the showroom in Copenhagen, you would have a latency of 150 milliseconds. And that, of course, has some consequence for, for how the perceived operation will be. But it will be possible. So many of the details to exactly what is the best way to set that up will be uh, unveiled uh, later. But um, it's interesting because some devices you want to control, they have a very latency, um, latency, they, they are very um, picky about latency. 
uh, I could mention an atom switcher, for instance. If you talk to an atom switcher, you need to to have very very low latency to to be able to to keep communication going. In such a case, if you need to control that over a huge distance, um, it will probably be a good idea to place the blue pill close to the atom switcher because then the the communication to the switcher from the blue pill from reactor will will be unbreakable basically while the connection to the panel is tcp based and is is much more relaxed in its requirements to the latency situation still you cannot beat the fact that you do have latency across the world if you go from you know the north pole to the south pole it is going to give you latency on small local networks i don't see this is going to be an issue please write us if you have specific reasons or questions uh, for that, um, that that you want us to dig into in, in more detail, and we would like to get back to you. Perfect. Uh, so we, we have a, a lot of questions coming in. This is great. Uh, Danny asked uh, a little while back, uh, any plans for controlling QSE QSYS products? Absolutely. And, um, ooh, Grant, did we not talk about this recently, or was it another one on the team? I can't remember. But it's like it's coming up. Um, I, no, no, no. Wait, that's that's Mashik. Uh, it's my huge sales team. We have our our European uh, technical sales manager. I think him and I we were recently uh, talking about QSIS integration once again. So it's popping up uh, again and again. And um, I would say it's also partly something that has been hit by Corona because last time I talked to QSIS themselves was at the last trade show I ever went to. And that was ISC one and a half years ago in Amsterdam. And after that, it's like communication just broke down because of world events. So um, it's it's um, actually what I often miss when people mention QSYS is some clarity on exactly how they imagine the panels being integrated in QSYS. Is it like a generic control panel or is it a specific application like PDC control and so on? So you're also very welcome to um, to let uh, our sales team like Grant and Tyler know what you have in mind and then they'll forward it, forward it to, uh, to the development team. So we have some idea about where to start with it or how to continue in fact, because we are definitely looking into it. Okay. More questions? I don't hear Tyler. I believe you're- I'm sorry. Uh... Hello, can you hear me? There you are. Yes, now I can. No? Hey, okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, Petra at Tech Condo is asking, are we thinking about combining multiple blue pills? Do they act as one if we do combine multiple? Uh, depends on what you mean by act as one. Let me give you a few uh, perspectives. <clears throat> Let's say you wanted to do redundancy. This is not going to be a day one experience, but let's say this blue pill is your master blue pill. And over here, there's an imaginary blue pill in my hand, or maybe a red pill, who knows? No, no, it's the blue pill. <clears throat> it's the simple life, right? It's the life you wish you still had. Um, this blue pill over here would be connected to the same devices and the same panels, but it wouldn't do anything. It would be in sort of um, silent mode. If you press a button on the panel, this blue pill over here would react and send a signal to your device and the device would communicate back through this one. But this one is always listening on the same traffic. If this one dies because somebody pulls out the network plug or for whatever reason, this one could take over immediately. So that's redundancy. That would be two blue pills doing the same task, but one of them not doing it until it's required. So that would be one way. So another way would be to say, if for whatever reason you think that this blue pill should not run both device cores and reactor at the same time, or if you have so many device cores that you want to, uh, you realize that um, it's it's getting hot or it's getting slow, or it's, it has some kind of capacity issue that I haven't seen yet, but if it had, <clears throat> and it was related to your 200 device cores, then you could actually take half of those device cores out on a different blue pill. And then you could tell Reactor, only 100 device cores are running here and another 100 are running over here. Sorry. 
So in that sense, reactor and the device cores, they are completely networked. They are talking to each other in ways that we can split them out <clears throat> and <coughs> sorry, my, my throat, I don't know what's going wrong, but I, I think you get the idea. The main architecture we have created is network based and therefore it is very easy to scale it by introducing multiple servers in that context. Another question from Kevin uh, is talking about BitFocus. What about partnering with uh, BitFocus for companion calls? Right. <clears throat> um, yes, actually, yeah, we, um, we know uh, Hokon and William and uh, we have uh, talked to them on a few occasions about our companion and the other things that they are working on. So uh, <clears throat> definitely they are just like, you know, up there <laughs> in Norway and we are down here in Copenhagen. So it's like only a... a uh, one hour on a, pl a plane. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry about my throat. Um, we don't have any actual plans that I could talk about right now. Um, and I think um, what I can say is that, okay, now if somebody is opening the door, who is saying, so ah, I get some water. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> I think what I can say is that um, we are working on how Skahoy panel can work with um, a BitFocus uh, Companion so that just like you can have a Stream Deck combined with Companion, you could also have a Skahoy panel combined with Companion. So that one we are looking into. Uh, we have some people on our team who are super clever with Companion and know exactly what to look at to uh to make this work so that might be a thing coming out at some point right now we are super busy getting this to market so that's our main focus but um don't uh, hold back from letting us know what particularly you have in mind um actually how you see skahoy and companion work together would be really great to know so please send a request mail to uh, grant and tyler and they'll forward it to the right people uh, another question from Petra, but it's maybe also for me. Uh, can we purchase the blue pill already, even if it's still in a beta version? Yes, <clears throat> we, we would like to invite early adopters, but we can also have only so many of them. And it has to make sense so that whenever we invite you into this, we also have the time to support you. The launch date is really a quarter. so. During Q4, soon in Q4, is our ambition for the blue pill. I would be not happy to be at IBC in Amsterdam in the beginning of December and not be able to ship it. Um, but it might also be close to that time. So <clears throat> that's all we can say about the launch date of the blue pill. Yeah, and maybe to add that if we have or if you have a very specific and urgent project, we can look at it because it's already developed. It's just a matter of prioritization between the different type of project and finishing the, the R&D uh, before uh, IBC. Um, another question from uh, Kevin. Uh, can we API call the reactor server uh, so we can trigger action? API called the reactor server to trigger actions. Let me see. So you want an API so you can trigger stuff in I guess so. reactor. So that requires, now I'm trying to map your, I know what you want to do and I'm trying to map it to what reactor actually is and how it works and so on. Um, I, I kind of want to say yes, but then again, it, it doesn't map directly. So your question really is, how open is this whole system for me to interact with? And <clears throat> let's let's try to stick to the, the things that I stated earlier, that it will be possible to develop your own device cores. And I think making your own device core and having Reactor connect to that device core and interact with it, which means that you can get data and you can send data. That's probably the first stopping place for that type of integration. 
but once again kevin it's uh it would be super great if you um i mean probably we might want to have a dialogue on an email about this or some kind of exchange where um i can answer your question more specifically and and link it to exactly what you you imagine that you want to do another one is what about blue pill and vmix yeah um <clears throat> Definitely. We already have a device call for vMix on BluePill. So it's um and, and it's going to perform much better on the audio part, which still has been a struggle for us to really make great, if I remember correctly. <clears throat> vMix has um we have a great integration on Unisketch, but there are still certain issues that has been too difficult for us to solve on that platform. But blue pill is like we are doing something something with the red komodo camera which would be difficult on blue uh, on on uh, unisketch but on blue pill we can uh, we can work with the red komodo camera likewise we also have more features and more capacity on vmix available with the device core there the first thing that you'll see us demonstrate is likely to be the mega panel of running on vmix and audio control with the airfly pro and the crosspoint 48 and the waveboard so this is our reference reference applications showing that to the full extent with vu metering and everything um you are talking about the mega panel a question about the mega panel from flow uh does blue pill replace the attempt proxy yes it would um the actually the atom proxy would be possible to run on the blue pill so um, the blue pill could be your atom proxy until the moment you you just stop that application and you start reactor instead because reactor is the the better way to handle the mega panel but let's just face it until reactor is um, considered stable enough to run your mega panel you would be using the atom proxy yes okay uh, uh, another one from uh another one from peter uh what can we see on the blue pill uh, hdmi out and uh, nothing at this point. Um, give us ideas. What do you want to see? Um, we will have HD um, out on it. And um, some of the ideas we have are not really a product. It's more like a, a side effect of some software we have written for our own sake, which would be a little media player thing and, you know, such stuff. But it's not even, you know, it's not considered something that is necessarily a product it it may be like so many things that you do for yourself turns out to be you know super useful for others as well and then it will become an application that will make the blue pill um attractive so um but but please uh you you can share ideas about what you see now you have seen the product you have seen what inputs and outputs we have we have a one gigabit ethernet we have a USB A. we have the hdmi output and we can combine that in different ways and good point, Casper. Uh, I just reopened the result of the poll that we raised at the beginning, you know. Uh, and what are what do you want to control with a scour panel? The main ID is the audio. Mm -hmm. and, and then lighting. Yes, right. Yes, and uh, none of that would be for the HDMI out. But yes, audio and lighting are two device cores that um, are, it's it's like a new set of device cores, right, that we are working on. We believe that we have um, a lot of exciting ways of integrating with audio and lighting to provide. If you think about controlling lighting in the context of camera control, suddenly you have a new parameter you can adjust. If you think about audio in context of your switcher control, then a, a panel like the waveboard is wonderful. So some of these applications can be brought out much better with Blue Pill, where tapping into the various audio protocols that are out there will be, I, I wouldn't say piece of cake, because it's really it always takes some, you know, more time than I like <laughs> to do these integrations. But on the other on the other time, sometimes I'll ju just enjoy a weekend and then I integrate some kind of device. And, you know, that's that's fun for me for, from time to time. So um, it's 
I I love making device calls. That's that's really great. And on Blue Pill, it's so much more enjoyable than it it ever was. Audio is definitely coming out. We already have some audio device calls available, probably from the launch date. So um, you can also expect to see those demonstrated and um, featured when we um, uh, during the next quarter. Uh, there is a, uh, a question in the uh, chat from uh, Jeff. Uh, so so if, we, if we run out of processing power on a Unisketch device, could the blue pill add processing power to control more devices? I would say yes, because this is one, I mean, I, I love how Unisketch is um, what it has been able to do until today. But unfortunately, sometimes you, um, you get into a situation with the particular devices and combinations you have chosen, you bang your head into a wall. I know that from support and it always pains us when we are not able to help people in that situation. Blue pill is also the, the, the solution to that pain. I, I, once again, the limits of how many cameras you can actually combine is virtually limitless. It's not 1000, right? Because then again, there's not enough processing power, but this is probably not what you're asking for. So it's just that the system and the resources it has, and even if the resources were not enough, could we go beyond? Remember once again, this is Linux based. So it's not like it is linked to blue pill in itself. If you are one of those, we get a few occasions every year where we would be you know, considering that that would need this to run on a different type of server, we could also facilitate that kind of stuff, but the software would be the same and we could, you know, scale. So for, but long before that, for those of you who uh, have been struggling uh, with some combination of devices and the resources on Unisketch, I would say, yes, Blue Pill is where we want to bring you to solve that issue. And hopefully you will also agree that you get much more out of that and and so on, at least as time goes by and how we develop this platform. Um, I suggest that if you, so you, you were triggered to ask the question because you probably have some experience with this. Um, I suggest you ask the question to the support hotline and that gives Kenneth or Tyler or Heather a chance to go and chat with their boss to hear if Blue Pill is actually solving that problem. So I would love that and join them for a cup of coffee, virtually, Tyler. Or maybe in real person, actually. I still want to go to US when Biden lets me in, in November. They say <laughs> November, yes. <laughs> I'll come celebrate Christmas. <laughs> We'll see. More questions? <laughs> not, not in California. Uh, we, uh, Jeff followed up with another question. He's asking about the pri price point of the blue pill. Um, this is for me, I guess. Uh, <laughs> the blue pill will be at uh, $700 MSRP. And uh, I, I don't see any additional questions unless I'm missing. Uh, we do have one uh, more. Peter uh, asks, how is blue pill power consumption via PLE? Mm. <clears throat> well, it's got to be less than 7 watts because the PLE module is 7 watts. Probably it's it's five or four, something like that. So it doesn't require PUE plus. Now, actually, one thing I didn't talk about is that we will have an extended version of the blue pill. <clears throat> the extended version um, will be able to power, to actually deliver power output, and it will have a different backplate with a little fan to keep it cool or cooler, uh, because really cool it's not gonna get. that. That version of the blue pill will actually, um, that, that will be able to go up to 30 watts. So that's a PoE plus device if you need that kind of power. But you would only get the extended version of the blue pill if you want to use the expansion port to actually have a super simple setup with one wire coming out here to your camera for power and data. In that case, you need the blue pill to deliver more power 
not only for itself but also for the camera in place and that requires poe plus yep yeah so you know, so guys, far yeah i think we, we covered all the questions so far yeah. that's great we're 15 minutes over time so uh if people are still <laughs> hanging on it's it's just just good it's great it has been fun being with you uh on this um on this webinar um do we have more to share team let me see yeah okay i need to invite you to write to us to sign up to newsletters and to subscribe to all our channels you know all the usual stuff that we want you to do because you don't want to miss out on the next news we have to share with you please um, make sure that you uh, get linked up with all the communication forms that I'm sure will be a part of the end titles here or somehow else announced with no, yes. Okay, so <laughs> I, I, I got this sign and I didn't know if that was great, okay, or if it meant we have zero. <laughs> and I took it as the zero, but then I got this one. And that's kind of universal in a different way. So that's great. All right, guys, uh, thanks for joining us tonight and hanging out here. I am looking forward to seeing you probably at a training session during this um, Q4 and next year in 2022. Time is flying by so quickly when you have reached my age. So I want to get the best out of life and I'm looking forward to meeting with you and I love working with this great team. So thank you all for this wonderful evening.